All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I've been going over some miles per gallon JavaScript programs, loosely at least, based off of our JavaScript 6th edition textbook by Sasha Vodnik and Don Gosselin. All right, and so far I've gone through a very simple miles per gallon program where everything was in one function. Then I broke it up into multiple functions, but these first two programs, <clears throat> they had no error checking. Then I came in and I put in error checking by adding if statements to make sure the input was valid. Then I went and added a while loop so we could run the program continuously. Then I went in and ran the, or put the program in an array and made it change the kind of loop and ran it five times. Next I went in and showed examples of JavaScript programs containing syntax errors, runtime errors, and logic errors. So I'm in the middle of chapter five now, and I first created a uh, JavaScript program, but it was more leaning a lot on HTML5, all right? So I want to get rid of that and write one almost in pure JavaScript. So what I've done, if you look here, we're going to remove required from here. Right. Other than that, I think it should still pretty much look the same. There we go. All right. And what I've done is I've removed, other than my comment and my, my comments, I've removed everything from here. So I'm starting fresh. All right, I'm hit enter a bunch of times to give myself some room. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is it's kind of a pain in the butt to constantly be typing in document.getElementID. So, what I'm going to do is kind of what jQuery does. I'm going to say var dollar sign equal, oops, uh, dollar sign ID equal, and I'm going to make a, um, an anonymous function here. And this is going to be equal to return document.getElement by ID ID. And what we just did was now, anytime we have to say document.getElementById followed by something in the parentheses, we can replace it by just using the dollar sign and then whatever we want in the parentheses. So use the dollar sign as an alias for the usual. for that. All right, so that's the first thing I'm going to do. <clears throat> now, was that that important? It kind of was because it's going to save me a lot of typing. All right, so now I have to figure out, well, exactly wh what do I want to do, how do I want to do it, etc. Well, if we take a look at what's in here, so if I go back to where we just ran the program, it's a little bit off kilter, but I can fix that. That's not a big thing. All right, but notice here, I've got two buttons. I've got a calculate button and a reset button. Right now, they do nothing, which is just fine. All right, but when I calculate, I want it to take the number that's in here, divide it by the number that's in here, and put the answer in here to do de to two decimal places. And when I click reset, I want what's ever here to clear, what's ever here to clear, what's ever here to clear, and I want my cursor to go right there. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to write my reset function. All right. So this is the function that will be called when the reset button is clicked. All right. So again, it'll be in another anonymous function. So var and I just called it reset form. And it's equal to, again, my anonymous function. And what do I want to do? Well, when we look here, remember, 
We're almost being jQuery-ish, so we've got an ID of miles, an ID of gallons, and an ID of MPG. All right, so we want to come in here and say dollar sign miles, all right, dot value equal, okay, remember that is the equivalent of same as so what have I done here I've made it a little easier to read right so I've got this and I'm not going to count the keystrokes but it's I know it's a lot less than this is all right so the first thing I want to do is again I want to clear whoops Try that again. First thing I want to do is copy that twice. And this one will be gallons. And this one will be MPG. Now I don't need that same message anymore. That's fine. And I'm a little anal about this stuff, but I do like it when stuff kind of lines up. All right. It will reset all text fields. Um, and the span fields, I'll explain those in a minute. And position the cursor at, or in I should say, I guess in the miles text box okay so that's clearing out the first field clearing out the second field clearing out the third field that's so we've done this now we want to reset those two span fields And that's going to set this back to where it's just a uh, what you'll see in just a minute is it's going to set it back so that it's just uh, a red asterisk. All right. So now I have reset all the text fields and I've reset my two span fields. So all that's left here is to position my cursor. So this routine that you see right here, and I'll leave it up there for a minute, the comment up above tells exactly what it's going to do. Clear out a text box, clear out a text box, clear out a text box, reset a, a span tag, which might have writing in it, reset it to just an asterisk, reset another one to just an asterisk, and put the cursor by my first field. Right? So that's the first thing I want to do. All right. Next. So this is the function that will be called when the calculate button is clicked. It will validate the values in the two 
text boxes. If they are invalid, the span tag or tags will be updated accordingly. Let's space this out a little bit so it looks a little nicer. If they are valid, if they are both valid, so how about this? If either or both are invalid, the span tag or tags will be updated accordingly. If they are both valid, the calculate MPG function will be called. Okay? Again, I'm just trying to set it up, trying to put in comments so you can figure out what's going on in here. So what I'm doing here is I'm processing my entries. That's what I call it, process entries. All right, so first, var is valid equal true. That's a Boolean flag that I've just made up. Var miles equal so what I want to do now is I want to come in and I want to set miles equal to parse float of our document dot get element by ID miles dot value. And then var gallons equal, just copy this and change this over to gallons. So here I'm setting my variables. Declaring, declare, and initialize variables. Okay? All right. Next, I want to validate the miles value text box contents. And when I get done, I'm going to do almost the same thing, but I'm going to be valid oops, I'm going to be validating the gallons. value text box controls. All right, so first we'll validate the miles. If it's not numeric, if is NAN miles, well, I know then I put something in there that's not numeric. So, Next, there we go. So if that's the case, we know we've got a bad value in there. So we want to go and we want to set its value here to, I'm going to put this on the next line. I'm just going to run out of room otherwise. Non-numeric input must be number 1 through 1,000, something like that. That'll work. All right? And I want to take my flag, my is valid, because it's no longer valid, so I want to set that equal to false. First, Check for non numeric input. All right. 
Next, check for out of range input. So this will say if, make that an else if. So else if miles is less than min miles, remember that? Or miles is greater than max miles. So that's saying if we put in a number that's either that's either oh, what did I do here? Less than than one or greater than a thousand. Now we want to come in here. We want to set this to out of range input. So we're letting the user know what kind of an error they made. So we'll change this to out of range. All right. And again, is valid will be set equal to false. So if that will handle bad conditions. Well, if it's not this and it's not this, it must be good. So else, if that's the case, then we want to set this to nothing because there wasn't an error. So this will handle out of uh, non-numeric. This will handle out of range. And if it's not numeric and it's not out of range, we want to set it to nothing. All right, now I'm going to grab this, copy all of this code, and I'm going to paste it down into here. Because now I want to change everything in here that said be 50. I want to change everything that said miles to gallons. And this will be min gallons. And this will be max gallons. All right. And that's got to be gallons. So we're validating both the fields. We're first checking this field. If it's non-numeric, we'll give one message. If it's less than one or greater than a thousand, we'll put another message here. If it's, if this is non-numeric, we'll put a message here. If, if this is either less than one or greater than fifty, we'll put a different message there. If both these are valid, we'll just get rid of it. No asterisk, no nothing. It'll be no message there. All right, so what do we want to do next? Well, we want to check. And if if the is valid flag is still true, or let's say set to true, call the calculate mpg function to actually calculate the miles per gallon. All right, so if is valid, and again, remember, this is a shortcut for, so this is the same as if is valid equal, equal, equal true. Right. Oops, what happened there? Wow. Okay. So if that's the case, then we want to set our MPG field and in particular set its value equal to calculate MPG, which is going to need the miles, and which is going to need the gallons. All right, then finally, on program load, C 
set the calculate button to be associated uh, be, uh, associated with the process entries function and and set the reset button to be associated with the reset form function. All right, so window dot on load, it's got to be a dot, dot on load equal again another anonymous function so a dollar sign calculate that is now says when we click that we want to we want to call process entries we don't put parens there because otherwise it'll actually call it we don't want that done so reset we want to take that button that button for the reset and we want to associate its on click event with the reset form function finally when we're starting, the other thing we want to do is no. finally set the focus to the miles text box at the beginning of the program. All right, so how do we do that? We say miles dot focus now that should be everything now did I type all that in without making any mistakes it's me so chances are no so let's try it and just see what happens save run the program now there's nothing in there and I'm gonna click calculate well of course I did could key in something wrong Uncaught syntax error. Unexpected token in line 92. Var dollar sign. Oh, that should have just been var dollar sign equal. I don't pass it anything in there. There we go. All right, let's see if we can get a little further now. Still have errors. Now I'm up to line 93. Which is the text line down. Oh, we'll get there document dot get element by ID ID that's actually correct ah I need a semicolon at the end when you're writing these functions remember to put your semicolons at the end it's a variable declaration that's why and process entries actually that ends here all right I'm making progress it may not seem like it but I am
Still says 93, unexpected identifier. Somehow part of this line is missing. So this should say, remember, this is a function that gets an ID passed into it. That's what that's what that needs. Wow. All right. Good. Non-numeric input. Must be between one and a thousand. Well, let's try putting in a number that's out of range. Negative six. And, well, negative six. Out of range. That's good. Let's make them empty again. They change back. Let's make them out of range again. And it looks like all of that is working. Great. So let's set this, I don't know, 255 miles. And we used nine gallons. Calculate, that's all gone. We don't have a value there though. That's not good. And reset, so reset's working. So the only thing that's not working is our calculate routine, which we probably didn't write. I should have put it right under the process entries and I didn't. Very short routine. So this function calculates the MPG by dividing the miles driven by the gallons used. All right, so another anonymous function, var calculate MPG and that's equal to function. And we're passing in miles and gallons. We'll just put it like that. And we just return miles divided by gallons dot two fixed to two decimal places. All right. If that is correct. That should be the last thing we have to do in here. As always, I want to make sure I didn't break anything. And I did. One seventy nine. How about that? Still doesn't like something. Still on 179. Okay. Var calculate MPG equal function MG return. How about another paren? There we go. All right. Non numeric. Out of range, non-numeric, out of range. I did make these both number fields, so we can't put anything non-numeric in there. So let's try 255 and 9. Calculate. There's our mileage, our Error messages have all gone away. Reset. These should be cleared. The asterisks should be back here to say these are required fields. And my cursor should be in this field. Let's put the cursor there so it's not. There's the asterisk. There's my cursor back. All right, so I'm going to put one more message here. And then I'm done. 
I'm going to put an H2 tag here that says all fields with an asterisk are required. And since we're doing that, let's style the H2. In fact, how did we style our error text? We just said color red. So we'll also make the H2 tag red. All right. There you go. Two more things I'd like to do. I'd like to center this and move these buttons over. So let's do that. In fact, let's go back to the style here. And we'll just make our own H2 tag. So we will do two things. We will do a text align center. And we will do a color red. Oops. Let's see if that fixed text align colon center. Did that fix the first of our problems? That is now centered. Good. All right, I want to move these buttons over. I don't know what is been, was done to the buttons to move them over to begin with. It says they're width of 100%. Um, that's okay. Let's grab the first button and let's give the first button our calculate button. That's got an ID already of calculate. That's good. So let's say for, because I don't know why it's pushed over as much as it is. So I'm going to say my button with an ID of calculate. I'm looking at it here and I want I want it to come back here so let's add some right well if we had right margin is that gonna work margin right 200 pixels well that's not it's not at all what I wanted that's fine we'll fix it so let's see How about float left? Now that's going to push it way over to the left, I believe. Eh, I like that one, but I don't like the distance between these two. So I guess what I will do, whoop, I guess what I will do is I will float both buttons. So calculate and reset float left how does that look still not very good so what did i do with my buttons here Let's try this. Input, I'm going to say type equals submit. And input type equal reset. All right. may not have changed a flaming thing. Well, pushed them both over. Good. That's fine. So, the float left does not appear to be working. So let's come in here and before we put in those buttons, let's have a thing called clearfix. Dot clearfix. And we're going to say here, clear both. All right. 
so I'm going to stick a div in between here, so right there. Div ID equal clear, not an ID, it's a class. Class equal clear fix div. So it'll be just a blank div. All right, now when I float these to the left, all right, did I fix that problem or not? All right, it's getting there. not floating the way I want them to. So let's try this. Let's do a width of 100 pixels. I want to just see what's changing when I do this. Not a flipping thing. Let's change these back. They're the same width, at least. Did a clear fix there. So for the calculate, going to try putting in here a margin left of 100 pixels. Well, something is pushing it way the heck over here, and I can't figure out for the life of me what that is. I've cleared everything here. Probably very simple. Those are the ones I can never find. This one to get some, some too. So let's try this just to see if it works. All right. Again, if that's too much, then this isn't gonna. It's gonna. Not do what I want it to do. see that so I don't want that all right so the first one is okay so that's all right to give it a margin right I'm gonna try just giving it like a 10 pixel and see what that does all right about 100 pixels. Okay. How about 75 pixels. Yeah, nothing. 45 pixels. I'm wordsmithing right now. All right. So what we're doing is not really very important. Okay, except I was trying to. I wonder if I do this. If I tell this now to float left. Well, that was sure interesting, wasn't it? All right, I'll do a little bit of work to fix this up. So for right now, I'm not going to do anything in here. But I'll look at it, see if I can get it to work. So for right now, it's not at all perfect. Maybe 
that's what was doing it. All right. Now what about the float left? Well, it's close. All right. Okay. I will fix this. I don't know if I do a margin right if now what this is going to do. Okay, I've got to find some way to move that over. All right, or I could stack these two so they were up on top of one another. I don't really like the way that looks, but regardless, it's not really in the end is going to be that big of a thing. How about if we try that? Good enough. I'm just going to leave that for now like this. Again, I'll fix it. I think I know what the problem is, but I'm going to fix it rather than embarrassing myself anymore. So I think I'm done with this one. So when I come back next, I wanted to show you this. This is not a good program to show you string manipulation and array manipulation. So I went out online to this site. And that site is https colon slash slash javascript dot info dot array. They've also got one that is for strings. I've got this, so I'm going to run through that. Excuse me, I'm going to run through that on, on arrays. And then I'm going to run through this one that's on strings. All right, so I'll do that in lieu of continuing on with our miles per gallon program. I will do these two next. Then I'm going to come back and rewrite... Um, our program one last time using jQuery. So there'll probably be at least a total of three more lectures. All right, I'll be back with those shortly.